So, the next thing we want to discuss about matrices is, is how to use matrices to solve a system of linear equations ok and in this we will talk about Kramer's rule ok. So, so what is a system of linear equations and where does matrix, where do matrices play a role in system of linear equations. So, suppose you have a system of linear equations, let us say you have unknowns are x, y and z ok, these are unknowns ok and our equations, we have equations denoted by let us say uh, I will just call this a 1 x plus b 1 y plus c 1 z equal to d 1 a 2 x plus b 2 y plus c 2 z equal to d 2 a 3 x plus b 3 y plus c 3 z equal to d 3 where, where a 1 b 1 c 1 d 1 a 2 b 2 c 2 d 2 a 3 b 3 c 3 d 3 are all scalars ok. They are all scalars that means they are they can be real or they can be complex numbers ok. You can write this in the following form, this is exactly the same as writing a 1 b 1 c 1 a 2 b 2 c 2 a 3 b 3 c 3 of this matrix multiplied by another matrix that has just one column ok and that, that matrix is denoted by x, y, z. So, as, uh, as I said the rules for matrix multiplication you multiply a 1 by x, add b 1 by y, add c 1 by uh, c 1 with z which is exactly this and this is equal to d 1. Similarly, if you do a 2 into x, b 2 into y, c 2 into z you will get d 2. If you do a 3 x, plus b 3 y plus c 3 z you will get d 3. And I can write a system of linear equations in matrix form and you can do this for any number of equations. You can do this when for any number of variables and any number of equations. So, for arbitrary number of, of equations and unknowns. ok. Now, uh, I said you can do it for arbitrary number of equations and unknowns, but uh, you know very well that, uh, that uh, uh, there are conditions when this system of linear equations can be solved ok. So, it can be done for arbitrary number of equations and unknowns, but, uh, uh, but solution for x, y, z can only be obtained for certain cases. That means, if you have this arbitrary number of, uh, e if you have this system of equations ok, then uh, it is essential that, uh, that uh, I mean you, you would intuitively imagine that the number of equations should be equal to the number of unknowns. So, if you have 3 unknowns and you have 3 equations then you can solve and you can get a unique value of, of the unknowns ok and that is what uh, that is what you expect ok. There are more uh, you know you know there can be more uh, more uh, uh, I would say uh, complicated cases ok. This, this is in general you expect that, but uh, we will we'll see later that uh, that if these if these equations are linearly linearly dependent ok, then it turns out that uh, you know 3 equations cannot solve for 3 unknowns ok. So, so actually actually in order to see when this can be solved you need to get the idea of something called a rank which we will talk about later. But the basic point right here is that uh, if you have a system of equations ok, then uh, you can represent it in matrix form ok. So, um, now let us say uh, you you have the case where, uh, uh, so if 3 equations are linearly independent and 
and consistent then we can solve for the three unknowns so i'll come to what is meant by linearly independent and consistent in a in a few minutes but let's assume that you can solve for the three unknowns so, so how would you imagine solving for the three unknowns Okay. Now, there is one rule called the Kramer's rule which can be used to solve for the three unknowns okay. and I will just, I'll just mention this right here. Okay. So, so, again this is only in the cases when these equations are linearly independent and consistent. So, if they are linearly independent and consistent okay, then I can write x as a ratio of determinants okay. And what is that ratio of determinants? So, so, I'll write the denominator first. So, denominator is a1, b1, c1, a2, b2, c2, a3, b3, c3, which is nothing but the set of these coefficients, which is nothing but the determinant of this matrix. Okay. Now, obviously, obviously the value of x should depend on, on also on d1, d2, d3. So, the numerator okay looks like uh, d1 b1 c1 d2 b2 c2 d3 b3 c3 okay similarly similarly i can write y as again you have the same denominator same denominator a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 but in the numerator what you have is a1 d1 c1 a2 d2 c2 a3 d3 c3 so so notice what you did and and similarly for z okay i want uh, i'll just i'll just write what 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 is z so z is equal to a1 b1 d1 a2 b2 d2 a3 b3 d3 a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 okay so so what we did is we have this uh, determinant of the matrix so, so that is the same in so the denominator for x y z are the same in the numerator in the first case you replaced the first column with d1 d2 d3 in in the case of y you replace the second column with d1 d2 d3 in the case of z you replace the third column with d1 d2 d3 okay so so this kramer's rule can be used to quickly solve a system of linear equations okay provided so works provided provided the equations are consistent and linearly independent okay so what that means is that uh, is that uh, the number of equations should be equal to the number of unknowns and the equation should be internally consistent okay so that's the that is the condition for this now i'll just i'll just uh, come back to the to this idea of uh, what it means for the for the equations to be linearly independent and what it means for them to be consistent okay so so um, again let me emphasize one more point that uh, the kramer's rule that we have done i have shown it for a 3 by 3 uh, matrix so for three equations and three unknowns you can do this for for an n by n matrix okay for n equations and n unknowns you can write exactly similar expressions okay and uh, kramer's rule will be valid in that case also only thing in those cases your determinants will be much larger okay but kramer's rule is still valid okay so now let's uh, let's look at some equations that are linearly dependent okay or uh, or, or or inconsistent okay so so what does so we said linearly independent and consistent 
So, we said that only if the equations are linearly independent and consistent can we apply Kramer's rule. So, what would be an example of a case where the, where the equations are not linearly independent? And what would be an example of a case where the equations are not consistent? Okay. So, let us take a simple example. So, suppose I have, suppose I have x plus y equal to 2 as my first equation. My second equation is uh, 2x plus 2y equal to 4. Okay, so, I have two equations and two unknowns, two equations and two unknowns. However, can you solve for x and y? The answer is no, you cannot solve for x and y. So, cannot solve for x and y because second equation is same as first as first equation. Okay. So, second equation is the same as first equation if you just divide by 2. So, so, so as first equation multiplied by 2. Okay. This is a simple example I did in a, in a for a two, two equations and two unknowns. If you have three equations and three unknowns then it is important you look whether one equation whether, whether one of these uh, one of the left hand in the in the left hand side one, one of the terms can be written as a linear combination of the other two okay for example let's take uh, let's take x plus y plus z equal to 3 okay and uh, let's take another equation that looks like 2x plus 3y plus z equal to make it 5. Okay. Now, the third equation I will I'll make it as 4 x plus 5 y plus 3 z equal to 11. Okay. Now, I have three equations and three unknowns, but notice that, uh, that uh, if I if I call this 1, 2 and 3, we notice that that 3 equal to 2 plus 2 times 1. So, 4 x is 2 x plus 2 times x, 5 y is 3 y plus 2 times y, 3 z is z plus 2 times z, 11 is 5 plus 2 times 3. Okay. So, the third equation is nothing but uh, the second equation plus 2 times the first equation. So, this implies that these equations are not linearly independent. So, you cannot solve using Kramer's rule for this uh, system. In fact, in fact, what you will get is that the determinant will turn out to be 0. Okay. In fact, in fact, what you will get is that uh, your, your determinant of this matrix so, if you take 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 5, 3, this determinant equal to 0. You can, you can verify this. Okay? You can easily verify that this goes to 0. So, Kramer's rule does not work. Okay? And you cannot solve this system of equations and it is obvious because you do not really have 3 independent equations. You have only 2 independent equations and you have 3 unknowns. So, you cannot solve it. Okay. Now, uh, what about the idea of consistency? And I'll just do it in this part. So, now, suppose you have an equation. Let's say x plus y equal to two, two x plus two y equal to five. Uh, you look at them; there are two equations. But you notice that the left-hand side of the second equation is twice the left-hand side of first equation. But the right hand side of the second equation is not twice the right hand side of the first equation. So, so uh, left hand side of second equation equal to twice into left hand side of first equation, but the right hand side of second equation is not equal to twice right hand side of first equation. Okay. In this case, the equations are said to be inconsistent.
that means if I just take the first equation and multiply by 2, I will get uh, 2x plus 2y equal to 4, but here I have 2x plus 2y equal to 5. So, there is no solution. So, these equations do not make sense or they are inconsistent. Okay. So, so clearly you can apply Kramer's, you cannot apply Kramer's rule, you cannot solve this system of equations. And I showed this for a 2 by 2 system, but you can you can extend for other systems also. Okay. So, so it is important that uh, before you try to solve the equations, you verify before you try to solve a system of equations, you should verify that they are both linearly independent and consistent. Okay. Only then you can use this uh, uh, Kramer's rule. Okay. Now, uh, you can solve a system of equations using row operations. Okay. You do not need to use Kramer's rule, you can actually use row operations. So, so how would you do this? Okay. So, I will I'll, I'll show this with an example okay, and, then, and then you can do it for uh, specific cases. So, so let us just, uh, just take one, one, one of the examples that we had. So, suppose I take uh, equal to 2 and I take 3 x plus 2 y plus z equal to let us say 5 and I take uh, let us say I take x minus y plus 0 times z x minus y I want it as 1. Okay. So, suppose I take I take this system of equations. Okay. Now, uh, now you can solve for x, y, z. So uh, what what you can do is uh, if you if you solve for x, y, z, what you'll get is uh, is uh, let let's just calculate the determinant. Okay. Okay. Or, or, so I'll write this in the following form: one, 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 three, two, one, one minus one zero. This multiplied by x, y z is equal to 2 pi 1. I uh, will do a row operation that, that converts this 3 to 0. So, what I will do is I will do and I and, will uh, do an row operation that, that does r 2 minus 3 r 1. So, what that will do is wherever I have r I do 3 minus 3 times 1 that is 0. I will do 2 minus 3 times 1, I will get minus 1 and I will do 1 minus 3 times 1, I will get minus 2. Okay. So, and in addition what I will do is R3 minus R1. So, I will do these two operations and it will be instantly clear why I am doing this. So, what I will get is 1, 1, 1, R1 is not changed, R2 you subtract 3 times R1. So, you will get 0, 2 minus 3 is minus 1. 1 minus 3 is minus 2 and uh, r 3 minus r 1. So, I will get 0 minus 1 minus 1 minus 2, 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Okay. So, I did this on the left hand side, I have to do the same thing on the right hand side. So, what I will do is I will leave the 2 as it is. Now, 5 minus 3 times 2 is minus 1, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So, so, so I get this equation. So, what I did is I just did some subtraction of the equations okay, and I got this. Now, notice that I have two zeros here. Okay. What I will do is I will try to get a 0 here by subtracting by subtracting this row. So, next what you do is uh, I will do the following. So, I will do R 3 minus 2 r 2. Okay. So, if I do r 3 minus 2 r 2, you can you can see you can see what happens. Okay. So, I will just show it right here. So, what I will get is 1 1 1 r 1 is unchanged. Now, r 2 is unchanged from here. So, more 0 minus 1 minus 2. Now, r 3 minus 2 r 2. So, this 0 minus 2 times 0 is just still 0. So, that is important that I converted this to 0 first. So, this is not affected. Now, minus 2 minus 2 times minus 1. So, minus 2 plus 2 that is 0, minus 1 plus 4 that is 3. Okay. This times x, y, z 
and this is equal to now what I will have is 2 minus 1. Now minus 1 minus 2 times minus 1, so plus 2 that is 1. Okay. So, so you converted the equations to something like this. So, the same 3 equations you sort of did some linear combinations and you got this set of equations. Now, you can immediately see just look at the third equation. So, the third equation says 3 z equal to 1 implies z equal to 1 by 3. Okay, immediately you do not have to calculate any determinants. The second equation says minus y minus 2 times z. So, 2 by 3 is equal to minus 1. So, this implies y equal to 1 by 3. Okay. And now, you have z equal to 1 by 3, y equal to 1 by 3 and so, and so you immediately you look at the first equation. So, x plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 equal to 2 implies x equal to 4 by 3. So, using these row operations, we solved this equation this system of equations and without using Kramer's rule or determinants, we managed to solve these equations. And so, and so uh, row, row operations can be used to solve equations. In a way, we did uh, without using determinants. If you have really large matrices, then calculating determinants each time becomes was very tedious. Whereas, if you do row operations, you can quickly solve the equations. In fact, even to solve, even to solve, uh, even to calculate determinants, you know, once you do row operations on a matrix, row operations do not change the determinant. So now, now once you get a matrix into this uh, into this form where you have zeros. Okay, then you can see that it is very easy to calculate the determinant. Okay. So, so row operations can also also used to calculate determinants. So, what you do is you convert this, uh, this matrix into a form where you have zeros on one side. Okay. So, so uh, I will just mention a few more things. So, uh, this is related to the row operations. So, suppose you have a matrix okay, that looks like this. So, it has it has zeros on one side. So, so it, it, it can be an arbitrary large matrix, but it has zeros on one side of the diagonal. So, this is called the diagonal of the matrix. So, on one side of the diagonal it has zeros, okay. then it is called an upper triangular matrix. And similarly, if this matrix has has zeros on this side of of this diagonal, okay. So this is called a lower triangular matrix. And if the matrix has zeros on both sides of the diagonal, so it has zeros here. Zeros here, then it is called a diagonal matrix. Okay, and uh, you can see that whether you have a lower triangular, upper triangular, or a diagonal matrix, okay, the determinant determinant for each of these matrices. equal to product of diagonal elements. So, whether you have an upper triangular, lower triangular or a diagonal matrix. So, whether you have an upper triangular, lower triangular or a diagonal matrix, the determinant of each of these matrix is nothing but the product of the diagonal elements. Okay. Now, uh, a few more a few more things about uh, determinants. Okay. And then, and then we'll stop uh, this discussion. So, so suppose you have a matrix. So, so there are properties of determinants. 
I will just list them and you can show them easily. Okay. So, first one is that if two rows or two columns of a matrix are identical, determinant is 0. Okay. Also, if one row or column has all elements equal to 0, determinant equal to 0. So, basically if you have a matrix where on an entire row you have a 0. So, for example, if you have a matrix where you have 0, 0, 0, 0 and then you have some non-zero elements A, A1, 2 and so on. But you have one entire row being 0, then determinant equal to 0. Okay? So, this has determinant equal to 0. Similarly, if you have a if you have a matrix where two rows or two columns are the same, then the determinant is equal to 0. Okay? So, this is one property. The second property is uh, row or column operations leave determinant unchanged okay so suppose i suppose i do these row or column operations that we talked about then the determinant does not change the third one cyclic permutation or interchange of rows and columns leaves determinant unchanged. Okay. So, that means what is a cyclic permutation? I just I just take I just take any any one row or one column and then i i sort of shift all the rows and columns by one okay so for example what is a cyclic permutation so so if you have uh, i'll just do one cyclic permutation of row so if i have a11 a12 up to a1n and then all the way up to an1 an2 up to ann now if i do a cyclic permutation so so, if I take the determinant of this matrix and I imagine doing a cyclic permutation, so, so this determinant is the same as, now I take, I shift A n 1 here, A 1 n, A n n and then I have A 1 1, A 1 2 up to A 1 n minus 1 and all the way up to A n 1, A n 2 up to A n n minus 1. Okay. So, what I did was I just took this last column and I moved it all the way to all the way to the first and I shifted all the columns to the right. Okay. Then the determinant is unchanged. Okay. Now, similarly if you if you interchange all the rows and columns, if you if you swap the rows and columns, that means in other words determinant of A is equal to determinant of A transpose. So, if you swap the rows and columns, then the determinant is unchanged. There is one more rule, I will just mention this briefly that if you if you change, if you swap any two rows or columns, okay. So if you just swap two rows or columns, then the determinant changes sign. Okay. So if you swap just two rows or columns, okay, then the determinant changes sign. Okay. So this is the last property. I'll just write this here. So swapping any two rows or two columns two columns changes sign of determinant
Okay. So, so these are some of the properties of matrices and determinants. Okay. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, you can use these very to, to do, to, to solve equations very quickly. Okay. So, you, so you, whenever convenient, you swap rows or columns or you add rows and columns or you take linear combinations so that your calculations become easy. Okay. So, so in the next class, I will try to do some practice problems. I will do some practice problems on these topics. Okay. Thank you.